Good afternoon. We've been in this quarantine, quarantine several weeks now, and there's really no end in sight, at least not by anybody that has any authority. So I'm sure by now we're all pretty tired. We're probably getting on each other's last nerve. We're kind of wondering how in the world we're going to make it to whatever point in time that somebody finally says, okay, we'll be out of quarantine this time. <laughs> you know, especially I think of all the kids who are home instead of in school. I think of all the parents that are at home with their kids instead of work. And I laugh kind of hard sometimes. You know, Cheryl and I have been homeschooling for just about 27 years now. Um, so really our lives haven't changed all that much due to the quarantine. I still go to work. Um, it's kind of funny. I'm more socially distanced here at the building than I am at home. You know, our building is probably 15 or 20,000 square feet and there's only two of us here, myself and the church secretary. And my home is only 2,000 square feet and there's eight of us there. So <laughs> I'm more in quarantine here at the building than I am at home. And I'm still making these devotional videos and I'm recording our Sunday morning sermon. So I would tell you the main thing that really has changed is, is Cheryl and I don't have date night anymore. Um, we don't really go out except I go to the grocery store a few times a week, probably more than a few, considering they're limiting the number of things I can buy and I have quite a large family to feed. So saying that, I've seen some of these memes on the internet, these homeschooling memes, and I just have to laugh pretty hard. I'd like to share some of them with you. Uh, this is a picture of a, of a mother holding a handkerchief over her son's mouth, and it says, day seven of homeschooling biology, testing to see if chloroform has any smell. I thought that was pretty funny. Homeschooling day one, two students suspended for fighting and one teacher fired for drinking on the job. That was pretty good. And this is a new one I just ran across that I thought was really great. It's kind of a, a block out of the day. 9 a.m. home economics, how to make me a cup of coffee. 10 a.m. Uh, mechanical engineering, how to run the vacuum cleaner, basically vacuuming the house. <laughs> 11 a.m. physical education, which means run outside taking the trash and recyclables with you. Take the trash out. 1 p.m. chemistry, how to bleach the bathroom or clean the bathroom. Uh, 2 p.m. geography, and it's not your normal geography, but it's figuring out where all these toys on the floor go. 3 p.m. science, and it's how this liquid stuff takes grease off your pots and pans, washing dishes. And then of course the last one, 5 p.m., which is the after school club, uh, which means go to your room with your iPad and be quiet. I'm sure many of you who are new to homeschooling can relate to these. Cheryl and I laugh kind of hard at them, uh, probably because we've been there before. And uh, it's just interesting to see people start on this particular path, even if it may only be for a few weeks. But to say that, we're all pretty tired of this new lifestyle, aren't we? We're all kind of fed up. And with this comes shortened tempers and maybe some quick tongues but we as Christians, we have to be different. We cannot fall into that trap where we let our emotions or our tongues or our tempers get the best of us. The tongue can be wicked and hurtful. Listen to what James calls it in chapter three, a world full of unrighteousness, a fire. He calls it a restless evil. He says it's full of deadly poison. Whoever it was that made this quote, sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will never hurt me. He's just a flat out liar. Names hurt. The tongue can become a wicked, wicked servant of evil. But we have to maintain our Christianity. We cannot fall into that trap where we let our tongue get the best of us. 
Now, I don't always follow that saying, sticks and stones, but names will never hurt me. Um, oh, I have another saying, sorry. I have another saying, put your brain in gear before you put your mouth in motion. Uh, so I don't always follow that, but I try to. You can talk to my wife, she'll tell you I don't always follow it uh, as much as I want to. But listen to, to Paul, listen to his admonishment to the church at Colossae. I wanna read Colossians chapter three, starting in verse 12. Put on then, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness and patience, bearing with one another, and if one has complaint against another, forgiving each other. As the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. And above all these, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. I'll stop. I'm going to continue reading some more text, but we need to really look at this because this, these are the things that God wants us to have all the time. And right now, we really need to model these characteristics of humility and meekness and patience, especially because that, that goes right into bearing with one another. If somebody says something that, that seems kind of short to you, remember the time that we find ourselves in. If somebody does something and, and you're like, oh, you sinned against me, remember the time that we're in. Forgive one another as the Lord has also forgiven you. And of course, love binds everything together. If we put on this self-sacrificing love, if we put on this humility, this meekness, and this patience, then this forgiving, this bearing with one another will come a lot more easily, won't it? Verse 15, And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing praises and psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. These times we're living in right now call for us to bear with one another, call for us to forgive one another, call for us to empathize, not sympathize, empathize with one another. And that means feeling what they feel. If somebody is hurting, you feel that same hurt. It calls for us to speak lovingly to one another, to be generous with yourself to one another. Now, I know God didn't write this particular text for uh, April of 2020 in the middle of this COVID-19 pandemic. He wrote it for us to behave this way all the time. But I think we need a special admonishment during these times right now to love one another, to be kind and gentle and patient, and to bear with one another.